word says that without you we can do nothing because you are the vine and we are the branches. We therefore invite you, the Holy Spirit, to come and dwell in our hearts as we share in the word of the Lord. That Lord, your message will be fulfilled and will reach where it is supposed to be. We silence all the noises around the environment and we pray that Lord as I speak, it will be your word and not mine. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Okay, I praise God, church. Um, yeah, my name is Gloria. I think everyone everyone knows me. Others say I give them bad seats. Others say we make them sit behind. But yeah, by God's grace, I serve in this church. And um, yeah, as Vika has said, <laughs> I am I am doctor by osmosis, I believe. And um, yeah, the, the real doctor. Is not here. He's uh, somewhere in some theater. Many times he fellowships from Golovi because he has to work at 8:30. Um, so I bring greetings. Uh, my shy daughter is here, and she does not want. To. She told me if I introduce her, we shall have a bad day. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the other one is in the in vacation, end of Olivo. Uh, she attended the first service. Okay, so with, I thank God that I am here uh, to share the word of God today uh, because God has enabled, has enabled me. And yeah, I also, before I start, yeah, I'd like to let you know that indeed, uh, on behalf of Dr. Wakoba, in case you want to participate in the medical camp and you are a doctor, a nurse, a midwife, or anything related to doctor medicine, I am here. I know all those medical things. Um, yes, I have even never helped a woman to give birth when she was alone. Because I used to see, there is a time I had seen how they were removing the baby. So, since there was no one, I bought a razor blade and I cut. By God's grace, the baby is five years. So I am, uh, I think I deserve a certificate in nursing <laughs> for all the 21 years that I have lived with a gynecologist. Okay. So, we are here to share uh, our theme this month is unity, and unity is the perfume which our brother Ebri shared last Sunday when our Baganda uh, were leading the service. And we continue to share in the same theme. Uh, unity is that perfume that binds us together. When you are not united, then you are not together. Uh, the other Sunday when we gave feedback, uh, as of course, what ends, we summarize the feedback so that indeed it can be acted upon. And there was this particular feedback that struck me uh, because my team leader team had said that I needed to be the one to share today. And it, one person said, "We what he likes, she likes most is that the, the church is lively, the clergy preach well, and what he or she doesn't like most is that after service and praying together." These rich people, they enter their cars and they drive away. They don't even give a lift to us, even when we are walking into the same direction. Sometimes they just pass and just hoot. And so the prayer was, how I wish that brotherhood could extend even to the people who, who, who are driving cars. So please, those of you who are driving cars, me inclusive, no one is spared. If you know you are parked a car there, there are people you hurt when you just drive and hoot for them, and yet they are walking in the same direction. And yet, yeah, so that was, yeah. So that was one of the feedback by one genuine Christian. Of course, you gave us a lot of feedback, and we shall work on it, but that one, I felt it touched me, it touched so many other people, and many of us are guilty, eh, of hooting uh, for those who are walking, eh, telling them, vow kolechi, since they are eating now. Okay. So, <laughs> that, I mean, I mean, if you tell the one walking fast, get off, let my car fast pass, eh? Yeah, it hurts others. So, let us remember that, yeah, as God blesses us, we can be good Samaritans also by giving lifts where possible. Okay, so today's what? Um, as good Samaritans, we are going on ahead with the unity theme, which is our theme for this month of July. And today, our sub-theme is, who is your neighbor, okay? So, our theme for today is, who is your neighbor? 
And as we read, both from Deuteronomy and also from uh, Luke, uh, we, were, we saw how they, they told us that that guy was an expert of the law. So an expert of the law could be a judge, a lawyer, it could have been a chief justice. They didn't tell us what kind of law, whether it was the law of the Old Testament, but they said the guy was an expert of the law. And you know lawyers like questioning, not so. Yeah, to justify or to see if you really know. And they said he wanted to test Jesus. So his question was not naive. It's not that he needed an answer. All he wanted was to test and see what can Jesus say to me. And he said, what can I do to get what? Eternal life. And Jesus said, what did Jesus tell him? What does, what is written down, not some. Yeah, and, and he was able to repeat to him what is written down is that we should love your neighbor as you love your what? Uh -huh. And so he asked, who is my neighbor? Because at the end of the day, most of us will always want to have boundaries. Boundaries on how far we can go. Sometimes we want to have boundaries even in what? In, in, even in ministry. And someone be like, ah, uh, for me, you know, today is the day for good Samaritan. Now, why are you what is, eh, walking around? Eh? Because we want to always have boundaries in our ministry. So even this guy, he wanted to have a boundary. Who is my neighbor? So he wanted Jesus to define the neighbor so that he can have the confines of what? Of where his help ends. And Jesus was able to explain to him. Um, like, a, like a coach, he asked him to answer himself. And he asked him, so from the one who passed, I was joking in the first service that the first person who passed was a priest. Eh? Like Reverend Bosa, he can be rushing to God lead ministry. And then he just passes eh? uh, sometimes. But of course, not, not that he can pass when someone is in a ditch. But we would have expected that priest would have been the one. You know, there are some people we expect that those are the ones who are meant for those things. Eh? Yeah, there are some ministries which don't look like some people. Um, and some ministries look like some people, not some. Yeah, so when one of my friends... I told him I'm going to give this example because he's in the church. Uh, he first asked me, but Gloria, what in life happened to you? You even became a warden, as in what really went wrong in life to give up that you even became a warden? So I said, what is the problem? He said, wardens are people, they sweep church and they give them food. Though that ministry is for widows and all those people. Yeah? And <laughs> So I told him that since you have come to this church, uh, let, let's wait and see. He's, there is a slow, he's about 60%. Uh, he's about to become a proper wedding. We are just waiting to. <laughs> and, <laughs> I have not yet asked him what went wrong or right. <laughs> but slow, he's, oh, he's a wedding, yeah. And yet he's still blessed. So some ministries don't look like some people, I think. But some ministries look like some people. So I think. Yeah, everyone would have expected that the priest and the Levite, those were the blessed and the upright guys, but they passed. The Samaritans were the, the ghetto, okay? The, the, the underlooked. But what did the Samaritan do? He stopped what he was doing. He acted. He pulled the guy out so that he can understand what his problem was. And he cared for him. And he even got someone to take care and said, when I come back, I'll pay the bill. And so Jesus asked him, so who of those was the neighbor? And what did the lawyer say? Is it the, the neighbor is the one who did what? Who was there? The one who helped. So our theme therefore is, who is your neighbor? Your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? Is it the one who lives near you? Is it the one who sits near you in the office? Uh, and can we be neighbors? So if I may ask, how many of you are good neighbors, therefore, having read today? How many of you are good neighbors? Forget what I said about the person's feedback, but it was genuine. How many of us believe we, can, we are good neighbors in what we do? We are wondering, eh? All of us. All of us. <laughs> okay, so all of us are good neighbors. Yes, people in this church here. Yeah. I believe we are all good neighbors. So, so the lesson we learned, therefore, the, in the Good Samaritan parable, although Jesus gave this parable, but the first Good Samaritan, the first person who gave up himself, his life, went through suffering, 
went on to the cross to die for us was Jesus himself, not so. He showed us an example that I can carry your burdens if, and I will die for you and you will be crucified so that you can have life. I will be cursed so that you can have a blessing. He gave himself. So the first we see is that yes, as Christians, we are here, we confess Christ because indeed by example, he led by example of loving your neighbor and loving everybody to the extent that he died for us on the cross. And therefore that is a challenge because he says he's the vine and we are his branches. The branches do not have different water from the main tree. We all should come from the main tree. We all have that Jesus DNA. So the first lesson, therefore, we learn from this Good Samaritan ministry is that when we love your, when you love your neighbor as yourself, it means that you love everyone. Because your, the, the neighbor, if we look at, yes, the commandment is love your neighbor as you love yourself. But when we read the neighbor, is, it's not defined. The neighbor is that one who has offered help. And when we see that Samaritan, he was not at all related or even close in, in, in terms of being privileged than the one who was in the ditch. So our first lesson that we should take up is that loving your neighbor as yourself means we love everyone. We shouldn't love only our tribesmates that today you see uh, me, I'm so when the greater north is leading, I'm not going to let us not help them because they will win us, you see? No. At the end of the day, loving your neighbor as yourself means love everyone. Um, the Samaritan and that foreign man were enemies. You know, just like even in our normal life, there are, there are people who are supposed to be enemies. They may not be written, but somehow it is known that those are enemies. Do not go there, okay? Because we have our biases. Um, about, 23, uh, about 22 years ago, when I told my family that I'm going to get married, okay, I was young, according to them, but two, when I told them so that it was going to be a mugisu, they said, those people, they eat their first bones. And, and I mean, that's what it was believed like, you see, yeah? And when he told his people, they said, those people from the West, they beat men. So, <laughs> so, so therefore, there was no will from either side for the two people to get married. Uh, the two people just decided that it doesn't matter. The hearts have decided. And 21 years later, we are counselors to some of them. Uh, when, yeah, so when they have problems in their marriages, many times they come to us. So when God is in something, uh, so you can prove, in other words, the Samaritan proved, okay? I just gave that example, just a separate, but the Samaritan proved that we can be thinking we are enemy, but I can help you out. Because a Levite and a Samaritan, they were not supposed even to be close to each other. So we should love one another. And when we read in John 13, 34, John 13, 34 and 35, you'll find that the word love is like, how many times in just two verses? There is a reason why we are being commanded. So if you read John 13, 34 and 35, it will tell you that a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So it, the, it, the, 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 the scripture keeps repeating, you see? I give you a command, it's a command to love. So each time you are mean to your sister, each time you are mean to that guy because he looks like the person who made you suffer, each time you, you withhold um, something good from another person, that help that you would have given, that time you say, I left him to suffer, let him learn a lesson. You are not, good, you're not loving, not so. So, and so we are commanded, love one another. That's the first time love is mentioned. Then, I have, as I have loved you. Then he added, the scripture adds, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciple, if you love one another. So the emphasis, do you think if he just said, love one another once, wouldn't it be enough? But it is emphasized because, remember, it is the greatest what? Yeah, many times we will come here, we will pray, we shall break the chains, the generation curses, 
But if we are praying, knowing that immediately after here, we shall go here in the corner and say, ah, ah, those people, eh? You know, those people even from, I don't even know why they are even coming here. Oh, that one, I just don't like him. It means everything we are doing is, is vain because we are supposed to love one another. So when we stop to, hurt, to, to help someone who has been hurt, our sister, when she lost her husband, yeah, people helped in many different ways. Others, yes, were at work, but everyone came up in one way or another. So someone feels uplifted because another person has been there. So even in the, the Good Samaritan, among us, we have been in lockdown. People lost jobs. Um, when you hear the stories, you know, because of being a Good Samaritan department, it's not easy to give accountability. And I know many of you ask, but we give money, we don't see accountability, we don't see you telling us, you know, it is not so easy that you help someone and then take a picture and then, you know, uh, and, and then you have to give that accountability. Of course, social media has taught us to give accountability of in that way, but it is not the way we agreed to give the accountability as the Good Samaritan team. But what we can assure you is that a lot of people have been touched. A lot of families have been helped. Children have gone to school and they have hope because they can, they can write uh, and read because you are there. Uh, people who have been just out of homes, we have had a sister who recently, I think the most recent, we had a sister who had run blind, but you came up very quickly and were able to pay that surgery bill so that they could have eyesight again and many other things that we do in the Good Samaritan ministry. So every time you put 1,000, 2,000 in that Good Samaritan box, you are helping another person you do not know. And the best help is for you not knowing who your 10,000 has helped. Um, it is the best way because it's, yes, it's good to call the media and they take pictures and they see, but the best help is that one. When you do not know that you seated here, and yet your money is what has saved or what has made one family to smile uh, with another, uh, to even speak with another person. And so our second lesson is that when we help a person in need, then we have helped Christ himself. So when we help someone in need, the help has not gone to that person. So don't keep saying, can you that one, I gave her fees, she has even never come to thank me. Now she's driving a car. You know, some of us are products of good Samaritans, eh? Yeah, so some people, when I was going to university, people brought, some even gave me raw eggs, others gave me live chicken. Of course, there had never been a graduation in my village, so people did not know what people were going to Makere bring. So <laughs> since they had got one, they covered, they carried whatever they could, coins, raw eggs, live chicken, beans, Everyone gave according to what they do what, but they had this loving what hearts, and they said, when you bring that degree, I have to be the first one to wear it, because in my village, the degree is the gown. So of course, when I took the gown, I made sure I had to leave it there, because everybody at least had to wear a degree. And so I'm a product of good Samaritan hands, okay? Yeah, and you can see if I wasn't helped by the good Samaritans, Maybe I would be very, I would be in a different community, not so. Maybe I would be in the ghetto. But you know when you have been helped out, sometimes looking back, ah, it looks like those things, I already passed that, don't even remind me, okay? Nako we nak, isn't it? Yeah, but we, when we help a needy person, we help Christ himself. And I want us to turn our Bibles to Matthew 25. We are used to that parable. Matthew 25 from verse 34. Uh, Matthew 25, uh, which, which I read from 34 to 40, uh, to show that he did the help for the needy, is help to Christ himself, and it has a reward and an inheritance. Um, so in Matthew 25, 34, uh, in 34 we said, the king, I'm using the new international version, the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. 
I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and we clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and we came to visit you? And the king will reply in verse 40, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So we can see that you did when we help out, we are helping Christ himself. And we are not supposed to get tired of helping. We are not supposed to complain because God loves a cheerful what? A cheerful giver. The most uh, comment that we will get when, of course, we get feedback is that you people, you're always collecting money. Money for this, money for the other. But all, all those collections, they are scripturally backed. We are supposed to pay our tithe. We are supposed to give thanks. We are supposed to help the poor. And also, sincerely, now if our clergy do not have where to sleep, uh, you want, and yet for us when we are entering our houses, the first person we want to invite is Reverend Bosa, not so. And Reverend Gross, come, you know, I have built, I thank God it is a three story calendar. There is a gym, Jacuzzi, Reverend Jangola, Choka. For them, you, you don't want him to also sleep, because just in a simple three bedroom what? house. So at the end of the day, before we call the graduate to come and, and, pref, and bless the things we have, the Bible puts it upon us that those ones who are preaching the word, it is our responsibility, okay? So let us not give grudgingly. That money, Reverend Bosa does not need it. Tomorrow they can transfer him, even Reverend Grace, or even the youth pastor. The house is for the pastor. It is not for any of them, even if they look like, maybe they, they don't look the kind you like, but that house, it, it, it is scripture that for us we should contribute. So when we are giving, let us not give grudgingly. Give according to what we have. And then let us do God's work. I can assure you all the giving goes to doing God's work. But when you just come on Sunday um, and you sit and you go, you may not know that there are certain things which have to be done. You may not know that those machines, this electricity, the water, the grass, the administrators, they have to be paid. The electricity has to be paid we have to pay to the diocese and there are so many things so you may not know because on sunday when you walk in ah you are like just on sunday why do they need the money but when you sit and you see how the money is coming and how the money is being spent then you realize that indeed it is our responsibility to put in um to put in money and develop our church so that we can be able to move on and then the third lesson that we learn is that when we give, we have said that when we give, we have given to God because, uh, and then also the third one is that the only thing that matters is what we do, okay? Action is better than what? Words. We are told in the book of James, in the Bible, uh, if, we, if you open your Bible to the book of James, and um, I think it's James, no, it must not... No, it, um, we are told that uh, faith without action is dead. I, you have forgotten the verse, but faith without, without action is dead. That you can you show me your faith and I will show you my deeds. Uh, so when we say we love one another, love, okay, is a doing what? Love is a verb, not so. And those days when we were in primary, they used to tell us that a verb is a doing what? So, when we love, our love has to be shown in action. The Samaritan, why are we remembering him? He acted. By the way, the two people who passed, they might have loved, they might even have said a silent prayer, but moved on on their business. But what did the Samaritan do? He acted. He got out of his way. He decided to know what this man was going through. He dressed his wound. He poured on him oil. He made him feel loved. So many times, when you love someone, you will realize that when you show someone love, they lighten up, okay? When you tell a child that, uh, 
you, you are stupid. You will not amount to anything. Do you think they will amount to anything? No, they, they won't because there is that thing that love brings when you get someone. I, I, I once had my child, she was in one of these traditional schools, my firstborn, and she was, she's gifted elsewhere. You know, in the local schools, it is the best six subjects, is physics, chemistry, biology, uh, like that. So like the mother, biology and chemistry, they are not her best. So the same way I used to doze in biology class is the same way she used to doze. And so she had a problem with a biology teacher. And when they called me and the biology teacher said, you see, the best six biology is there and chemistry is there. This one is going to spoil our grades. So you must pay money for coaching. So, um, so I looked and said, but now, ma madam, you want me to invest in biology? This person has no future in biology. So, but be patient after S4. She will have other things, and so let's just say, you know, you people, you will not even amount to anything. How can you do that so without biology? You are unfinished, okay? And that past, that girl never became the same again until we had to remove her the following term and take her, yeah, uh, to we took her to an international school because we might say so many things, but those people tell children that you can fly and they make them have confidence. So, whatever we say, those people know how to build. You can't take it away from them. And to make matters worse, that girl got triple A and she's abroad studying on scholarship at university. Why? Because someone in international, they received her with love, concentrated on her best. The biology, they told her not everyone is a doctor. Even the teacher said, we are not doctors. Don't you see us? Here, there is no doctor. Are we together? There are four. And we have produced the world's best people. And so she just realized that not being a doctor was not bad. But in the other traditional school, she was told, being a daughter of a doctor and an, a niece of the chief examiner of chemistry and you're not doing biology, you are finished. And so she had died. Uh, spiritually, she had died. But when she went to those who told her, in this in school, there are no doctors. So all of us, and we are successful. Do you see our cars? She said, yes, have you seen a doctor here? They said, no. So for us here, we are not doctors. And she's doing a bachelor's in digital science. And she's doing a mean in digital finance because that's where she was gifted. So sometimes love can blossom someone. But each time we are so bad to people, even the good in them goes away. Some of these people you see on the street, everyone told them you are useless. So they as well went where? To the street. So let us love our people. Even when someone is doing well, don't say you are poor. Don't call someone poor or needy. Just say you are blessed. Because you might have money, but you, you, you are sleeping at Mama Finance to maintain that money. Not so. The other one is in, in a musico, but she sleeps the whole night. Even she doesn't hear the Muslims, what? Alarm clock. Nayanga Are we together? So all of us are rich but we are rich in different ways. So let us love one another, okay? Yeah. Let us remember that when God has blessed me with speech, uh, he has blessed Robina with intercession, not so. So I need her when I am down, okay? I may not be able to, to speak into your life the same way Reverend Bosa will do. But you know, he, with his structure, he may not look as attractive as the other one with a big stomach, because a big stomach signifies you have dollars, isn't it? But he knows where his riches are, okay? And so we should not uh, overlook people, and we should, when we say love, love everybody the way they are. We should not have classes in church to think that a certain ministry is for poor people, and a certain ministry is for what? Rich people. When we cut together, all of us, we have different gifts. And yes, if you have the money, give the ones who don't have, not some. In the book of Deuteronomy 15, when we read, let's me read only the, one, the last verse, no, the verse 18, it says, it was Deuteronomy that, uh, let me just go back. It was verse 17, which I'm, it was Deuteronomy 15, and I'm going to read verse 18. And it says, do not consider, 
plus sorry okay so i'm going to read uh, verse 11 there will always be poor people in the land therefore i command you to be open handed towards your fellow israelites or your fellow namgongonians all together who are poor and needy in your land okay so there, there will always be people who don't have what you have because god blesses us differently but can we use our gifts our money to serve the one who does not have what we have you if, if you are gifted in prayer can you use that to pray for the others who uh, they are weak in certain in some ways they feel weak uh, you can tell that some people someone is weak because someone will come and tell you but no, they are not praying like this okay uh, because you know maybe that's how they have been told but the Lord told us how to pray when we are praying what do we do we honor God we give thanks we repent we petition him we pray back his word to him but not everyone is blessed that way if you are gifted as a Sunday school teacher other than writing that you see these Sunday school teachers they are always in a hurry what if you gave one Sunday okay as, as a good Samaritan, go and help out some of those Sunday school uh, teachers so that we can be good in one way or another. It doesn't have to be that we need something good to love one another. You are your neighbor when you take care of those Sunday school children without being paid. You, these are good co Samaritan committee members, but we are all good Samaritans. The money we use comes from you you may not have been there but you have contributed so like how we have been told that if we have been commanded let us help those who are in need in need of money in need of counseling sometimes someone just needs a little counsel to know that indeed they can move on in life one good samaritan young lady uh she was so heartbroken and so when we met her, I asked her, but for you, young, you're about 22. Is there something? You can't start begging at 22. And she also agreed. So he said, instead of us buying your food, is there something your hands, is there something you can do? And then she said, sir, soma. And then I said, um, do you have a Bible? And she said, yes. What did God tell Moses? What do you have in your hand? Not so. So I asked her, in those hands of yours, is there something those hands can do? Then she looked, I said, before you start thinking, if you're breastfeeding, those hands can do something. Because there is a way you got a baby, they are even carrying a baby, so apart from um, holding the baby and holding the man, there is something you can do with your hands. Because sometimes you give tough love, eh? And so she said, yeah. Then I said, have you ever seen people who roast kasoli? Having the money written on kasoli in their forehead? She said, no. Then I said, is baking better than kasoli for roasting? And she said, no. So I said, if we give you some little capital, would you be able to? And now she's very happy. She even said, no, because she's working with her hands. Not so. Yeah, and that was your money. We gave her about 300, but it has produced. When you pass there and she sells you tomatoes, you feel, wow, the Christians of where? Of Namgongo, they have done a great job. So let us build one another and help one another. And lastly, when we give, let us not give just because we are going to receive a reward. Because the Bible tells us our reward, God sees what we do in secret and he will be able to reward us himself. So when we give, let us not give just because we think we are going to receive a reward. For the word of God says that the Father himself sees what you have done and he will reward you himself. So as I conclude today, the Good Samaritan team is looking out for ambassadors. This is a committee. These are just the team leaders of Good Samaritan. So we have a card like this. If you have money today, you will put in the Good Samaritan box. But this card which I'm asking the Good Samaritans uh, to move around, you can pledge to be a good Samaritan ambassador. You can tell us when you think we can contact you, whether it's in December. How would you like to support us regularly? Because we have some small project we want to put up. Sometimes we receive clothes, but we need money for medicine. We could easily sell those clothes in a place 
and get money and pay for medicine. So, in case you would like, only if you would like, you can have that card. That card you can put there, whether you're going to support weekly, monthly, annually, or one-off. And you can tell us whether you want us to remind you on which date, and we shall privately remind you. We promise we shall not run a list to, to kind of show that, you know, this is the one who hasn't given, this one has given. No, we shall remind you privately, and as you support the Good Samaritan work. May God bless you all, and may we love one another and use our gifts to be a healing to another person who is not doing well. God bless you. Amen, amen. You might have to put up your hand and you get the card.